it is uh, imperative that this committee pursue all constitutional remedies. That may include contempt, and it may even include impeachment of Mr. Koskinen. There you go. Congressman Jason Chaffetz calling on President Obama to fire IRS Chief John Koskinen for obstruction of congressional probes. And joining us right now is Sarah Westwood, investigative reporter for the Washington Examiner. Sarah, great to have you with us. Your new column focuses on this issue, and you write this. I quote here, Republicans and Democrats on the House Oversight Committee disagree on whether to ask the president to remove the head of the IRS with Republicans slamming the commissioner's relatively short track record and Democrats criticizing the majority's, quote, manufactured crisis of an ongoing scandal. So how is this going to play out? Because it does not seem like it's sustainable to keep trotting John Costin and out uh, in front of a congressional committee uh, to deny more allegations. It just doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Right. I mean, keep in mind that John Koskinen himself was brought in as a replacement for top IRS officials that were forced out when the scandal first broke. But now it seems that he has blocked the investigation in the year since. Uh, there have been instances when evidence was destroyed under his watch, even though that evidence had been requested by a subpoena. And now there's evidence that he may have provided false testimony to the committee. So it's really a question of how long he can hold on to that position in the face of more and more evidence. All right. So you can't lie under oath, obviously. And we also have a, a uh, Wall Street Journal uh, editorial that was written by Ron DeSantis, Jim Jordan. Uh, they are also joining Jason Chaffetz, Jason Chaffetz in the calls for Koskinen to step down. They say, in effect, the IRS commissioner needs to go. But we know there are only one or 21 House Republicans right now who have publicly called for Koskinen to go. And of course, they'll need much more than that. Uh, why hasn't this been something, based on what you just told us, the possibly lying before this committee uh, and the rest, why has there not been more GOP calls for him to go? Well, this investigation has mostly been limited to the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. All 21 Republicans who called for his removal were from that committee. There's also some more investigations going on uh, over in the Senate. But as far as the House goes, it's really concentrated to this one committee. And they're deeply involved in the details of this probe. So they know uh, the discrepancies in the dates, for instance, when Koskinen said that he would try to procure all of Lewis Lerner's emails for the committee when we now know he at the time was already aware that thousands of them had been lost and he could have come clean but didn't. There is not really any other committee that's focused as hard on this issue and who would have the knowledge to be able to make such a bold call for Koskinen to be removed. All right, we know the president says he still supports John Koskinen as does Jack Lew at the Treasury Department. We'll see where it goes from here. Sarah Westwood, always great to talk to you and get you uh, to keep us up to speed on th these and other items from Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us, Sarah. Thanks for having me. All right, Sarah Westwood from the Washington Examiner. Well, now it's time for a segment we like to call Money Bombs. It's a look at campaign fundraising and financing. And now we have some new figures to tell you about where those big bucks are coming from. The Wall Street Journal has a great new graph breaking it all down, ranking the candidates based on how much money they've raised by themselves and from their super PACs. Jeb Bush coming in first. He has that Right to Rise super PAC with $103 million. Very successful there. He's also raised about $11.4 million by himself. Jeb is followed by Hillary Clinton, who has raised $23 million through her super PAC, but she also has raised $45 million on her own. And Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, and Scott Walker rounding out the top five of those who have raked in a lot of cash. Though Hillary, we should point out, has spent the most so far on her campaign, about $19 million. We do expect that to come up quite a bit. Also, Hillary is sharing uh, some deets about her big-time fundraising news via Twitter. Quote, We've raised more than $46 million for the primary for more than 250 individual donors, 113 of whom are named Hillary. Great, great, good for you, Hillary. But that's important. A big deal, though, when you talk about these small donors, if you think back to the 2008 campaign, Barack Obama did just that in 2008, bringing in a lot more money from individual small donors, helping him uh, project this image of a man of the people. Now, as for Bernie Sanders, the guy who's trying to be that man of the people this time around, he's raked in $15 million, much to the surprise of a lot of folks who thought he was not going to be a serious candidate. He is pointing out the fact that the average donation was a little over $33, far under the maximum you can donate. 99% of Bernie's $15 million in donations coming from people who gave less than $250. That shows you how wide-reaching Bernie Sanders' support is. 
right now. All right, Yahoo Finance also t uh, tackling this question. Will there be money left for number 16? And that is John Kasich. The answer, a resounding yes. Kasich, no stranger to fundraising. He knows what he's doing. He's raised nearly $40 million during his two campaigns for governor. This time around, he has the backing of notable donors with deep pockets, including Les Wexner. He's the billionaire retail uh, titan behind Victoria's Secret and the clothing store Express. So there you go, John Kasich rising in the polls. We'll see if he makes it up there on the campaign debate stage. Also, Donald Trump, he isn't going away. The media and his critics say he does not have a plan. Well, he does. In fact, he wrote a whole book that he says will make America great again. Trump's bestseller is called Time to Get Tough. It outlines Trump's plan to roll back Obama's policies, secure the border, and deal with China terrorism and much more. Newsmax has a free offer for this book. Just go to Newsmax.com slash Trump book to get your copy.